Hey guys, Roxabox90 here with the first video of a potentially new series. I'm not sure if it's going to be a series or just every once in a while, but as I've mentioned on my channel, I thought it'd be cool to do an EDH overview of your guys' decks because I put up my decks and I have in-depth discussion about them. Then I've gotten lots of response, people asking me, well, my deck is this, can you help me out with it? And he yeah, has a lot of questions, but Really, in all honesty, the best way to kind of work with the deck is to see the deck in front of you and to read through the deck, see what works with what and such. So, Frederick360, I believe is his name, is the YouTuber who kind of pushed the idea. Um, I've gotten a couple other people who asked about it too, but he was the one who really suggested it and I had to give him credit for that. And so I thought I'd do his deck, his deck first. And that's what I'm going to do. So, so this deck is a... Band colored Feldegriff deck. So band colors are white, blue, and green, and the lots of different generals you can use who are very popular, Rafik, Janara. Feldegriff is well known for being group hug, meaning you use it in a deck that's very feel-goody, where you make other people feel good, it's usually multiplayer oriented, and Feldegriff's all its abilities reflect that because they all help an opponent. But it's usually target opponents so that you can make some people feel happy, and then other people say, why won't you help me? And then you basically, it's very political and very fun. So he said his deck's not exactly the political Feldegriff build. It's more along the lines of a Rafik build, somewhat ETB style, um, enter the battlefield style. So Feldegriff's more from personal preference, but still, I thought it'd be cool to check it out. He said it's part Voltron. So Feldegriff is a power creature, because it's 4-4-4-4, four, 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 and even though its abilities can help your opponent in multiplayer, it's fair enough in terms of buffering that it's not a big deal, and you can, of course, make it a strong creature and deal commander damage. So that's what he said is part of the deal. So I'm going to run through the deck quickly and go through different cards, kind of maybe give my own suggestions and such, kind of just an overview of what he's done with it and what he's told me he's done with it and my own views on it. So in terms of his, over here we have his curve. I like Tapped Out does this. It gives you clear curve on the same page as you have the cards, so that's pretty cool. So the only thing I want to mention, he seems to have everything broken down pretty well. I think it's pretty good in terms of numbers. He, he, the issue I find, I'm going to go through the deck particularly, you'll see what I mean, but he has very few cards that are over six mana, and even he, he, over six mana cost. The problem with that, in my opinion, obviously some decks work well, but in all honesty, if you're going to be using a basically multiplayer deck, even 1v1, you want to have a number of cards you're building up to, cards that will impact the board more powerfully, and you really don't want to be stuck in a low end of the curve. So as you see here, he has a hefty number of three, threes and fives, and of course his two, th four, and sixes are all pretty equal, and one cost. So the thing is, he, has, he doesn't have a lot of one cost cards, so it makes me presume, not knowing the deck, in depth, but it makes me presume that his deck is more multiplayer oriented because 1v1 decks tend to run a lot more in the 1 and 2 ranges because you're trying to move quickly because you're against one opponent, not multiple, so you don't have to worry about later game as much as you would. So that's what's kind of confusing me here. I'm presuming that. Of course, it might be wrong. He'll correct me. It's probably more multiplayer oriented. If it is, you really have to think about late game and you're I think you're missing a little bit in the power range of things. And in Bant, you can do power creatures, power spells, and the like. Um, I don't really have to list them all. You can check out my Rafik video if you want to see what I mean. Basically, like things like Inkwell Leviathan, Akroma, uh, those sort of power creatures, Imperial Arch Archangel. This It can go on and on. Any really powerful creatures fit in those ranges. Things like Genesis Wave as a, as a big board hit sort of thing. Like that's you're kind of looking for really big powerful spells and you don't seem to have really any except for the one colorless eight cost which i'll find here somewhere um so i'm just mentioning that and now since i'm spending time let's go through the deck so creatures wise he's pretty heavy on creatures acidic so slime is pretty obvious i know why that's there azorius other mage interesting card whenever a permanent is returned to your hand you may pay one if you do draw a card so I haven't looked through the whole deck yet. Um, I'm presuming that he's gonna. Some of his ETB is returning to hand and then putting into play, um, because he has. Uh, I saw he has some cards like 
equilibrium in here. So he has a number of ETB, but he also has like the bounce back to hand. So Azorius Ether Mage is pretty cool that way. Um, you might want to run Cloudstone Curio. It's really good for that sort of thing. Because when you play a non-land spell, you can return one of the same type to your hand. So if you play a creature, you get a creature back in your hand. So that would just go bonkers here, I think would be fantastic. Um, Crystal Shard as well, I don't think you have that either. Crystal Shard could be good for that too. So if you're going to be running that sort of thing, Azorius Ether Mage, Mr. Azorius Ether Mage is a pretty decent card if you're doing them more heavily. If you're not doing it very heavily, then I would stick more to just ETB, LTB stuff, not putting back your hand and recasting. So just my thoughts. Bloom Tender is not that great. I mean, if you're basically, if you're looking for ramp, then I would just run the uh, Noble Hierarch or Birds of Paradise or something else uh, if you're looking for that sort of mana fixing. If you're looking for just pure ramp, I don't know if you need Bloom Tender. Just my thought. Changing Titan's pretty weak. I don't think, I, I like that you can champion a creature and then it comes back into play, but as a card, it's very, very weak. Uh, I would just stick more to flashy ETB stuff. Draining Welk. I never liked Draining Welk because you really have to... You'd have to ETB it as an instant speed, and it's a very hefty counterspell in terms of its cost, so I'm not the biggest fan of it. I would, just, I would run something more along, along the lines of Duplicant if you're running ETB. Eternal Witness is awesome, of course. Farhaven Elf, fantastic. If you're running a lot of basics, which I believe you are, you're not running many of the shocks and stuff. So Farhaven Elf is great. Fauna Shaman, a lot of people have been telling me about this card to run it in my deck. I'm not as creature heavy, but in his deck, he definitely should because he's very creature heavy and it's definitely worth running. And these two work together like gold. If you're serious about recursion, then which he seems to be, then Genesis is a pretty decent pick. I don't like Genesis, so I don't run it. And I've never needed it because my deck doesn't do as much casting. It's a lot more just putting stuff into play and out of play. But it's definitely a good pick for his deck style. Glenelendra Archmage, of course, always good card. Hannah Navigator, I, I just run Academy Ruins because, yeah, it puts it on top of your library, but it's a land. It doesn't need a dedicated spot. But Hannah's pretty good utility, and I think it's absolutely fine, especially if you're going to be using lots of artifacts and enchantment cards, which you do. Uh, I don't run a lot of enchantments. Joiner Adept, same thing. I would just run a Birds or Noble Hierarch. I, I don't think that you need that for your for your curve fixing. I would just, if you really are worried about your filtering, just run filter lands. They're not terribly expensive, and they're fantastic. And with them in your deck, you should be fine. Karmic Guide is classic. Night Captain of Aos is pretty good for bouncing out of play. This is His deck is somewhat more defensive, so that makes sense that he wants to be able to prevent combat damage on a whim, and if you ETB it out, you get tokens. So that's a pretty good pick. I wouldn't run that in my deck, because for me, I, I don't need that protection for my style, but that's fine for his. Miss Metal Witch, of course, classic ETB card. I don't run it because it's pretty hefty cost. I'd rather run something that's static, like Conjurer's Closet, but to each his own. Classic ETB card, good ETB card as well. Level Titan, definitely a great card, though. No question. Revelark, fantastic. Seaborn Muse. I just happen to not run this card, but Seaborn Muse is never a bad card. It's always good in any deck that can run it. Solemn, classic. Stone Cloaker, I used to have in my deck. It's a pretty good pick. Bounce out of play for ETB. Stone Forge, of course, if you're running swords or equipments, then Stone Forge is fantastic. It's fine. It's a fine card. Stone Horn Dignitary, I mean, seems pretty specific. In EDH, You'll often run decks that combo and control, so I don't think that that uh, he's very good. Half the time I die in EDH not because of creatures, but because of spells. So I don't know how, how important that is, especially you have the Night Captain Veos. So, I don't know. Sun Titans, of course, great. Sunblast Angel is pretty decent. I don't like that he doesn't have Flash. And in EDH, I would rather just run a, a board-clearing spell than run a creature that's that does what he does i'd rather run a more general so yeah i mean i just run a, another wrath spell instead of him and venser's fantastic of course uh aura shards i personally don't run it but good for you go for it Eldrazi conscription he's running more voltron oriented so that's one of the best cards for that sort of thing equilibrium you already said he's kind of putting back in hand so that makes sense land tax is a great ramp card good for you that's a good one 
mana reflection, more doublers. I don't need them so much. Mari's Wake, I completely agree with. That would be the one I would run if I need to. Mana reflection, though, is pretty cool, especially if you're running some of the early ramp dudes. So so uh, good, that, that makes sense. Um, Story Circle, I don't know. It's, it's a super protection card. It's really, really specific for what it's doing. It doesn't do anything but prevent damage, and it has to be in play. So, I mean, if you draw it and you're not so much, you're not really worried about um, damage, you're worried about other combos and spells, it seems fairly limited. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of that card. Teferi's Moat's kind of the same problem. You're not going to run into decks that are just creatures and nothing else, so it's pretty limited. Maybe search for, to get Wraths. I don't know if that's, if that sort of strategy is necessarily the best. The, take this, take this with a grain of salt. I'm not be, trying to be super critical. I'm just trying to point out what I don't see as necessarily working. Elspeth, of course, great choice. Great choice. Always good Planeswalker. And Venser. I don't want Elspeth just because of space, but she's great. Man lands are fine, although I don't run them anymore because I don't like how they hit play tapped. So Command Tower is great. Basics, good, good. Glacial. These are pretty decent um, if you're worried about budget. These are decent. I still don't like the hit play tapped. This is a problem in general. I would run pain lands, the ones you tap and you lose a life every time you add one of each color. And so I would run those instead. You can look up what pain lands are if you're not sure. They're probably better than this because they don't hit play tapped. Cycle lands are fine. Um, prov is fine also if you're worried about generals and big creature damage. See, I said it hits play tapped. It's good. Same problem though, it hits play tapped. So I I would try to stay away from that if you can. Have most of your lands not hit play tapped if you can. And man lands have that same problem. And Trevor's Ruins is pretty decent. Just remember to, te I mean, it, you, you lose your one land behind. So unless you're heavy ramp, Trevor's Ruins could be a bit of an issue. So yeah. Instance, Ban Charm's fantastic. Eldarmy's Call, that's great. Lion Tutor, Mystical Tutor, good tutors. And worldly tutors. So those are all. Those are all fine. Um, the all three of these tutors are card neutrality. So just keep that in mind. Here, we got a path to exile source of shares, which is kind of kind of expected in spot removal. Some of the best spot removal you'll find in these colors. Trevis Charm is also pretty versatile as spot removal. It's not as good as Ban Charm. I would probably run Beast Within over it, even though it's decently. It's a decent spell, but I really don't think it's as powerful or as versatile as you need it to be. So I would probably do Beast Within instead. Void Slime's great, and Tutor. Then let's see, Artifacts. He mentioned to me his decks, as we've said, a little Voltron-y. So we have some, some Artifact equipment. Bamoth Sledge, which is fine. I don't think it's good enough, to be honest. It's three equip, three play. The swords are just better. I mean, it's it's obviously a good stand-in if you're trying to be budget, but definitely run a different sword. Even a War and Peace or Body and Mind are probably both better than this card. Probably. Maybe not Body and Mind, but War and Peace for sure. I know, and the other sword, sword of Fire and Ice, Sword of Light and Shadow. Not exactly budget cards, but definitely better choice. Birthing Pod is, as I mentioned in my video, it's an interesting card for this sort of thing. I think it's fine. I Part of the problem is, like, I see Birthing Pod here, and then I don't see, like, you hit a max at 6 at most. Like, 6 is bam, and then where do you go from there with Birthing Pod? Do you go get Elish Norn? Do you get a Chroma? Do you get Inkwell Wyatt? No, there's none of it. So, I think if you're having Birthing Pod in, it's a good choice, of course, but maybe incorporate part of the the extending of your curve with Birthing Pod would probably be pretty cool. Uh, Imperial Play is pretty good for each card in your hand if you have a lot of card draw. I didn't see a lot of card draw in your deck, so I don't know if you need it. I mean, it's cool. It can make a creature get like 5 plus 5, 6 plus 6, 7 plus 7, but, but I'm not quite sure. I think it would be better if you had a little more card draw in general, and I think then this card would be even better. Fire Shrieker gives double strike. You're not running Rafig, otherwise you probably wouldn't even bother with this. So this for a Felder Grip might be pretty I think it might be pretty good. It's basically the same cost as a sword and pretty decent in terms of what it does. As I said, 
uh, I would run swords instead of some of the stuff, but if you can't afford the swords for your deck you're running, then this is a fine, fine substitute. Lightning Greaves is pretty awesome. Definitely there. Logs and Warhammer suffers, I think, the same issue as Bama's Touch. I just don't think it's good enough. The Lifelink doesn't matter so much. Trample is fine, but if you're going to dedicate a whole card, chances are the swords are just better. Mind's Eye is pretty decent card draw. Sword, here's the sword, of course. Fantastic. I would run more of these if you're any, in any way Voltron heavy. Whisper Silk Cloak is fine. I don't think it's that important. It makes it unblockable, but to be honest, if you have a bunch of the swords, they'll make it unblockable too, more than likely. Speaking of swords and equipments, I would run Steel Shaper's Aura, I think it's called, because that card is good in, a, an, equipment, in an equipment heavy deck. That card's pretty awesome to have alongside your other searching cards. So I, I would run that if you can. You only have three Wrath spells, which is okay. Austere Command's great. Hollow Burial's great. Route is good too. I would maybe run one more, maybe, just because, you know, Wrath spells are pretty good cover, especially if you're using your general a lot, because your general will go away with the board if your Wrath spell doesn't tuck it away, so other Wraths that are not Hollow Burial would leave your general accessible, and then you could pull them back in and use them. So things like, I'd, I'd probably stay more anti-creature, so maybe like Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, stuff like that. It's, well, actually, all this is good, too, because it'll leave your equipments alive. So, you know, like a Chroma's Wrath and things of that nature, you might not want to do. So, can, I consider that. Cultivate, Kadama's Reach, I would run one or the other. Still, even though I know you're not running, having both these cards as ramp, I'm not sure if you need it. Not sure if you need it. Maybe play around with it. Try, try not just using... Try not using... Like, if you have to pull a card out, try taking one of them out and see if it affects your, your ramp. And if it does, it does. I mean, you have a lot of ramp stuff. you got you got good creatures for ramp. Hopefully, maybe we'll even add more. Your lands, hopefully, will be not hitting play tap. You won't have to worry about getting them as, getting basics as quickly. And hopefully, that will work out. Demand. I never even saw this card. Oh, demand. Searches for multicolor and puts saplings into play. Your deck's not really token. I don't think you need this card, to be honest. Multicolor card, I mean, it's pretty limited. It searches just for multicolor. Your deck's not, like, rampant with multicolor. And supply is kind of, I don't think you, I don't think you need that. And then let's look at your maybe pile quickly. Flicker Wisp, it's a, it bounces another permanent out of play. I would run Restoration Angel. It's probably the same thing, just better. So if you can lay hands on one of those, that's probably a better bounce card. Sorry, Skilled Mage, pretty good utility. I think that would that'd be interesting. Definitely try that. Craven, interesting land switch in. It prevents other Voltron stuff, so that could work. And it's a fine card. No, no argument there. Dismantle and Blow is it's interesting in that it allows you the opportunity to draw cards, which is cool. And destroy an artifact or enchantment. Or enchantment. I think this card is it's decent. I would try it. See how it works. Wargate is great. I didn't run it in mine because when I was first playing, I had trouble getting curved right. So having one of each color and then X to play a card, I it never helped me. Sorcery speed, but I think it could be really great. Speaking of instant speed, you might want to put Alchemist Refuge in here, or Vidakan Orrery, or Winding Canyons, because those sort of things make your ETB even better, since you can do it during their turn, if you have a way to make yourself instant speed. As I said, I wouldn't run a Chroma's Vengeance if you're very artifact heavy. I would run a different thing. Maybe All is Dust, I think, would be really good for your deck. Harmonize, good. it's an okay card draw. There's much better stuff. There's much better stuff than Harmonize. Tidings, by definition, is, is a, it's one mana for one for another card. So as a scale, scaling up, it's pretty good. Concentrate is pretty much the same thing in blue. Those are sort of general things. Blue Sun Zenith, you might want to run something like that. Recurring Insight, it was actually pointed out to me because I kind of forgot about that card. That's a really good card draw, particularly if you have blue going. So I would run that as well. And yeah, so overall, I think it's a pretty solid build. As I said, your curve is decent. I would put some more bigger spells, bigger spells in. I would maybe try to just do some better cards, like pull out cards like Stone or Dignitary that you don't need. 
and put in just better cards in that in these colors. I'm just, I mean, you can find from my deck, you can find from other people's decks. It shouldn't be too hard to work your deck around. And equipment's kind of the same way. It's also budgetary. It depends on how much your budget is. I'm not exactly sure. But if you can budget it, more swords, go for it. It's definitely awesome. Maybe, as I said, like another Wrath and All's Dust. You need more card draw. I think you have pretty good ramp. I wouldn't be so worried about that. I think more card draw is important here. Maybe try to, try, as I said, try to get the Pain Lands. I don't know the names for these colors, but they're the ones from 10th edition that you tap and you lose a life for those colors. So they hit play untapped, and the life is not so bad. You have, you have enough life gain not to worry about it. I would try to get those. Get Filter Lands, the ones from Eventide, I think. Get those. They're not very expensive, and they would definitely help your, your color control. Anyway, I hope that helped you with your build. I hope you guys liked how I checked out this guy's build. Please feel free to give me feedback below. I'm going to be doing more of these, so I'd like to maybe condense it and figure out a more efficient way of doing things. But first time's a charm, and I think it went over pretty well. So thanks for watching, guys. Please leave comments below both for his deck and him to work on, as well as for me. Just, you know, I'm always happy to hear your comments. And as always, Rocks, Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.